Bowers Intelligent Transportation moves over 6,000 people to and from work every day in luxury and style. Bowers state-of-the-art luxury coaches are fully equipped with leatherette seating, Wi-Fi, direct TV, Corian tables, power outlets for your phone or laptop, and even a bathroom. Each Bowers coach removes as many as 52 cars and 2 million pounds of carbon monoxide per year. Commute to and from work for as low as $13 a day. Call Bowers Intelligent Transportation today at 800-546-6688 or online at BowersIT.com. It's the Will and Willie Show, and I'm Paul Wells with the Honorable Willie Brown and the sometimes Honorable the dishonorable Wilders. Wilders. And we don't get a chance to say our own names anymore, huh? No, no, that was, that was the we first We did that time at the beginning, really, didn't we? I'm Wilders. I am. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be. And I'm Paul Wells. <laughs> and, and I'm Willie Brown. Well, let's okay. go. <laughs> We're ready to roll. I like the way you said that. Uh, I've been listening That's for a little years. Little yeah, 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 yeah. I'm with the belt. <laughs> And a we're going to <laughs> having the former mayor of San Francisco, the former supervi- board of supervisors, president, and actually the day he that was mayor. election day. Weren't you mayor for two days? No, no, that was Chris Daly. Oh, oh uh, but the right. day that you well, had why the you election. Why would you say that? Why are you trying to remind me? Because <laughs> <laughs> I went said because right <laughs> I told you if you had made me the acting mayor, that wouldn't have happened to you. <laughs> Now, Matt Gonzalez, you did run for mayor, and on Election Day in 2003, correct, you did carry the the vote on Election Day. It was the write-in votes that were for Gavin Newsom. Not the write-in. But the The early voting. Absentee ballot. Absentee ballot. I have the uh, distinction, uh, someone told me recently, of having the most votes for mayor and not holding the office. So we'll see how long that that lasts. But... uh, well, with a field oh, no, 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 of 14 no. yeah. now, I don't know who's going to get more votes. <laughs> but the field is closed now, right? N- the yeah. horses are at the gate, and they're off. There are 36 <laughs> people uh, who sought an opportunity to run. I think that I was told yesterday that that number has been dwindled to 17 at, who qualified. qualified. At least 14 that I have listed, including Mayor Ed Lee, who decided to run, city attorney Dennis Herrera, Supervisor Bevan Dufty, Supervisor Michaela Aliotto Peer, uh, Representative State Representative Leland Yee, Supervisor John Avalos, Supervisor David Chu. Now, is this Joanna a Joanna Reese? Joanna Reese. Is this a record number of supervisors? And, and Tony Hall is I another bet. name. Yeah. Another uh, Jeff another Adachi through his name. Phil uh, Ting. Phil Ting, ass- Assessor Phil Ting. Is this a I, record number of supervisors running for mayor? I don't know. I, I think for recent history, though, in terms of major candidates, people that have held elective office, I think it's the, it's the highest I can recall. My race had, uh, in 2003, we had about six or seven major candidates, uh, former office holders. We had Susan Leal, Angela Aliotto, Tom Amiano, Tony Ribera, former police chief, Gavin Newsom and myself. So, but you were the only two office holders. There were four more office holders this time around. There are at least four or five office holders. There's David Chu. There's um, Dennis Herrera. There's Adachi. There's Adachi. There's Avalos. Phil Ting. Yeah. Think, yeah, Phil Ting. We got s- at least five or six. And I think you are right, Matt. This is literally the largest crop of office holders. People who've taken an oath to do one thing and they're doing something different by virtue of seeking this office than we've ever had. You know, in a lot of jurisdictions, they make you give up your seat in order to run. You and and I I discussed that. And I know, uh, uh, Mayor Brown, your position, if someone had a commission appointment, was to resign if they were going to run for office. And you know why, Matt? Because there is obviously a conflict right out of the box. You can't do the job of being president of the police commission while running for office you can, you just doesn't work. You can't be head of human rights while running for office and not have that leveraged some way to give people the impression that you're doing other, your job. But then the other argument is that it, when you when you're holding an office and you're running you're running for re-election, That's that your focus is split as well. Yeah, but it's it might be the same kind of split. When focus. you're running for the job you already have, 
you're going to do that job anyway, and you're going to push that job, period. But when you are in the position, uh, and, and I believed literally in that, and so every person I appointed, I told them up front, the day you file for any office is the day I accept your resignation. The city deserves to have an objective person holding the commissionship. I think running for office, if you're running for an office other than the one you're holding, you literally ought to resign. In many jurisdictions, they have that requirement. You can't, you can't have a safe, safe haven in running for office. In, in well, you can in Congress, because remember when McCain ran for president and he was senator, U.S. senator. Yep. But wasn't there an instance where uh, the, the, he ran for senator and president at the same time? That's right. He was on the ballot to yeah. be reelected as senator. That's yeah. right. I think that was Kerry, wasn't it? Well, I think, I think where you see it really play out in a way that is uh, damaging to the city is when you have office holders generating all these press releases about new initiatives they're working on, which are really less about those initiatives and more about promoting themselves because it's an election time. And of course, if the requirement were that you had to resign in order to run for office, I think, I think these candidates would take a much harder look before they jumped in. Well, I think we all know what the most important issue facing the city of San Francisco is right now, and I would like to know your position on shark fin soup. <laughs> it's back yes, and forth. No, yes, no. Yes, no. Yes. How did you? I, I, I think I think I think most people are uh, worried about the economy. I think on a national level, you see President Obama's uh, approval rating suffering because of that. And I think on a local level, they want to know what mayoral candidates can do about jobs. They're worried about taxation. What can they do about jobs? What can a mayor do about jobs? Well, I think it's a complicated issue, but I mean, I think you have to try to uh, draw, uh, how do you say, uh, you got to care about different kinds of jobs from the industrial workers all the way up to the, the high tech jobs. And I think in San Francisco, one of the things we have to do, and there's been a long standing debate about it, is whether or not you protect those industrial zones from development because they are your last vestige of the working class job opportunity. On the other hand, you also want to cater to an emerging you know, technology if you can draw a new kind of worker and uh, you know, obviously you coordinate your efforts with local community colleges and whatever training you can to make sure that they're putting out the workers that can service that, that workforce. But it's a, it's a tough issue, no question about it. What do you think about the Twitter move, allowing Twitter the many tax breaks to move to Sixth and Market? That's literally what you have to do in order to be competitive as a place where people want to invest and where they want to uh, produce, period. And uh, San Francisco lost the opportunity many years ago to be uh, the uh, research and development operation because they had laws and rules that said to investors, we increase your risk by the amount that we extract from you in case you do invest. So Genentech and all those people were down in South San Francisco. Not until we got together and did Mission Bay did we begin to reverse that. And when we did Mission Bay, we now are beginning to increase the number of and people attract. who are doing and attract research and development. We still have, obviously, some adjustments to do, and the Twitter thing was exactly that. Having them say, and they were on Howard, they were on Howard Street, actually. No, they were on Folsom Street. They were on Folsom and Fourth, not too far away from here. They had outgrown that particular space, and they were being uh, solicited uh, by surrounding uh, communities, communities in particular, Brisbane. Brisbane's got a see-through high-rise office building on the right-hand side going towards the airport that nobody has been in, and it's a fabulous building, yet nobody is using it. That building was almost, was literally being marketed uh, for purposes of moving people down there, and they had a good shot. So you had to compete, and the way you compete is to make it possible for people in the transition stage from where they're located to where they like to be located, you want to give them a boost and an attractive offer to do that, and that's what was done. I mean, I, 
I think I understand the argument. I mean, my concern is uh, what message does it send to other businesses that don't get a similar arrangement with the city? Um, and I think in this particular case, uh, our business tax, and I think a lot of the candidates are, are starting to talk about it, because of the repeal that took place when I was a supervisor of part of our tax, we've got a payroll tax which discourages employers from hiring more people because they're being taxed based on what they're paying their employees. It's not a very good tax to have in place, and I think it's been a failure of, uh, and, you know, I don't want to pile on or, or, or single out Gavin Newsom's term as mayor or his two terms, but I think that, that there, it was a failing not to do something about that repeal of a business tax and really work and make that a priority. As a result, when a Twitter comes around and has this problem and is, is threatening to leave the city, you're left to enter into a negotiation like this because you don't have the time to, to, to really get your hands around the entire issue. We're going to continue on that note in just a moment where our guest here is Matt Gonzalez on The Will and Willie Show, and I'm Paul Wells. Stick with us. <laughs> 